it's Laura here with Silk and & Coop and today I am at one of my most coveted wineries in the Okanagan, Van Amite, and I'm here with the co-owner, daughter of the owners, as well as winemaker, Catherine Coulomb. Cheers. Thank you so much for having me here Thank today. Thank you for coming over. Um, so I guess I'd like to start out by asking you um, in sharing the history of the winery. Sure. Well, it's um, it's not a very long story since we haven't been here too long, but um, I would say uh, Vinamite started um, as a dream in, with my parents uh, when they found a property that had five acres of grapes and decided that they wanted to retire and uh, have a nice little hobby farm that ended up bringing the whole family out here and uh, becoming um, in the wine industry pretty quickly. So 2013 was our first vintage. Uh, they bought the property in 2009 and uh, well 2008-2009 and uh, started farming wine selling the grapes to other wineries um, and uh, hence when I moved out uh, with my background being in food and wine um, it just became a dream come true, working and learning all parts of wine. That's amazing. So tell me about the varietals that you're choosing to focus on and why you have elected those varietals specifically. Sure. Well, uh, my dad's dream is all French style uh, wines. Uh, even myself growing up in their household, there was wine all the time. And um, he's traveled and drank his way through France. So uh, we're doing traditional French style uh, varieties. So um, we're focusing on a nicely gently oak Chardonnay, Burgundian style, mm -hmm. uh, Gamay Noir Beaujolais style. Mm. We serve it with a bit of a chill. And uh, we do three red blends, so Bordeaux style uh, blends with Merlot, Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon, and uh, we do a single bridal Petit Verdot. Yeah, so you were mentioning earlier when we were chatting that um, you this is your second vintage of Petit Verdot? It is, so yes. Tell me a little bit about your approach and how you're handling the grape because I know sure. that it can be a little bit hearty, quite tannic. So yes. how are you doing a single varietal expression? Okay, well that's a very good question. So uh, we're purchasing our grapes at a beautiful location um, south of us and uh, the farmer crops it quite heavily so it's all about the fruit flavor and the terroir is perfect for it um, which gives uh, quite a bit of minerality to the wine um, but what the way we treat the grape is actually very delicately um, it, wine making style uh, if you over extract you're going to get heavy tannin um, a, not a lot of fruit expression with us it's about gently um, punching down the grapes and tasting them very often to decide when we're, we want to press the skins off of the juice. Mm, Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And so you referenced minerality and um, for all of the people watching um, who might not be well versed or entrenched in the wine industry, I think that it's quite an abused and misused yes, term. Yes, sure. So can sure. you explain what you Where, mean? What I get from it? Sure, minerality? yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> um, well, when I think of minerality, I think of sucking on a stone. <laughs> Literally putting, or like the um, the taste and the coolness you get from mm. putting a, um, a nice river stone on your tongue. Um, or even the smell of um, a pencil and a pencil shape. Oh yeah, You pencil know, when shavings. you're shaving. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So getting that like kind of like a bit of a flinty and yeah, that cool, it's, I can't really describe it, but that does that make sense? Yeah, of okay. course. So go and uh, find some pebbles and yeah. uh, give, them, give them a taste. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Yeah. And why would you say that that's um, uh, an aroma or a flavor profile that so many winemakers are trying to achieve? Well, I think that um, a sense of place is always mm. very important when mm -hmm. it comes to wine. And um, the really great part about wine is you could have Merlot grown here, mm -hmm. Merlot grown over there, and have two completely different Merlots, mm -hmm. depending on style, winemaking style, and just the way that the, the grapes were treated since pruning, from pruning in the vineyard. It always starts in the vineyard. Yeah, so, you know, of course, exactly. Yeah. So terroir. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So can you tell me um, a little bit about uh, your opinion on um, your uh, referencing uh, viticulture specifically? Um, I talk a lot about this on the vlog, um, how we're kind of in this genesis phase where we've really gone from the focus being on solely winemaking to that of being in the vineyard. Are you heavily involved? Like, yes. Yeah, so out there? I would say it's my parents <clears throat> fully who have taken the time. Um, they spent, they've taught me everything that I know. And of course, we're still young at, at doing it. We mm -hmm. haven't been here for too long. But um, they, when they moved out here, spent the time at the courses, learning with, with farmers from across the street who were giving them notes and with their little notepads. And 
So when it comes to everything vineyard, that's all my mom, dad, and um, they are the ones out there, you know, pruning um, the plants. And right after Christmas, they start. It used to be just my dad doing it, um, and now it's just a little bit too much for all of us, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so we get some help, which is great and greatly needed, especially with everything that we're doing now, yeah. with the wine, what's happening down in the cellar, what's happening there, what's happening with the wine itself. Once mm -hmm. it's gone into that bottle, you know, the two, three years in the making, yeah. um, what happens once it's there? Mm -hmm. You know, you can mm -hmm. make the stuff. Now what's going to happen? You're gonna, you have to sell it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what has been the reception to the wines? So far, so great, actually. We're very, I think we're very lucky mm -hmm. in the way that people are understanding our style, which is fruit forward, berry forward, um, not super heavy in tannin, so very approachable, but will age well mm. at the same time. So, um, for example, our Bordeaux style blends, you, you can drink a glass tonight if you'd like to, um, but, or, but you don't have to have a steak with it, for yeah. example. Yeah. So, um, referencing um, your kind of comment on structure and ageability and cellaring um, capability, how do you achieve balance in your wines? Like, what is kind of your approach? Well, that's a good question. So, um, I think acidity is important. So, gauging um, when to pick uh, the grapes. Um, so, acidity, tannin, so structural tannin, acidity, those two things right there are obviously going to give a lot um, of direction as to where the wine is going um, but also oaking too you know um, it's all about balance um, enough oak to structurally allow it to, to move forward as well um, and fruit mm -hmm. flavors layers textures yeah um, let's talk about what what you're drinking right now oh um, sure and doesn't necessarily have to be specifically Okanagan but right. maybe tell me a little bit about your inspiration obviously French and old world but um, Tell me some Okanagan wines that are really exciting you right now sure. and maybe some international styles as well. Okay, so well, I guess what I could say is um, I've done a little bit of wine touring, not a ton. We don't get out much, mm -hmm. um, as you probably know. Um, but I think some of the styles or the grapes that I'm super loving right now would be um, Riesling's um, Chardonnay's and Syrahs. Mm -hmm. I, I'm just in love with them. And of mm -hmm. course Merlot. I love Merlot. I have a real love affair for Malone. My Why dad is that? I almost had a fight about it because oh. I wanted to have single varietal but it it did beautifully in all of our blends. Oh, it's okay. just so versatile. Yes. You can do anything with Merlot. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Um, and tell me about how you're doing your gamay. You said it's a little sure. bit fruitier. Are you doing carbonic maceration? That's a good question. No we're not. No. Um, we're actually um, just using a little bit of oak. It's all neutral oak. Um, maybe one barrel that's a little bit um, a little bit newer um, so we kind of treat it more like a white so it kind of it's on okay. the same um, vintages that our whites are so for example right now we've got the 2017 just like we've got our 2017 whites not Chardonnay because Chardonnay is the 2016 yeah because it's got that extra time in barrel so um, no we don't do uh, carbonic macerations we just do a lot of pump over so we're allowing oxygen to get to it um, a little bit more. Uh, we've, I think it was about a week and a bit on the skins. Um, okay. Just really gently um, punching down. We obviously didn't want to get too much tannin um, to it. It's in the style of Beaujolais. Um, so, but again, this would be really nice aged. We've been drinking mm. since 2014, Gamay, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, so, with the chill, we're good to go. It's a yeah. summer in a glass. Great with salmon, great with chicken, turkey, mm -hmm. you name it. Well, and it's nice to see so many styles of Gamay coming I agree. Coming forth from the Okanagan specifically because I think it is such a versatile varietal. Like totally. You can like, be really masculine and yes, um, robust, very peppery sure. and, or completely opposite of the spectrum. Um, so I, I think that's why we're seeing a lot more of it because I think Gamay does really love the terroir of the Okanagan. Sure right? does, yes. Cooler climate, <clears throat> along with Pinots and Chardonnays, um, they're absolutely gorgeous. And I think um, with the temperatures of the fermentations going really nice and slow, slow and low, um, letting them take the time that they need to ferment and not having any spikes in temperature really help for making a really beautiful fruit forward um, gamay, which is what we do. So are you are you doing wild or spontaneous or no. just inoculating? No, just we're inoculating, <clears throat> but 
it's all about temperature control right. in our cellar. So um, because you don't want to lose those nuances of the fruit flavors yep. that you want them all fruit, all forward, all berry forward, and that's kind of what we do with this. Okay, yeah, fabulous. So this is going to be a little bit of a controversial question, um, but do you think that there's noticeable differences between female and male winemakers? Um, I think sometimes you can taste it in the wine. I've noticed, and I've had people know, say that before, you can you can tell um, sometimes. Um, I think that our wines are maybe a little bit more feminine and don't have extremely heavy tannin, maybe just a little bit softer, more mm -hmm. elegant. Um, I don't know, it's hard to say. I think I need to go out and drink more yeah. <laughs> to, yeah. to be able to answer that um, question. Um, I don't know. I just, the reason that I ask is because I'm such a huge fan of your wines, um, another one of my favorites, and obviously I don't like to pick favorites, but another winery that stands out in my mind is Le Vieux Pain. Of course, And yes. Stephanie is doing like stylistically very similar things to you guys, and I'm like, I just wonder if it's those those feminine kind of like influences that are coming through. That would be cool. <laughs> that would be very cool, um, especially to be, you know, sitting next to Severin. She's, she's amazing. She yeah. really knows what she's doing. Um, I think probably there's a part of us all who thinks that, you know, maybe in the style and, and you know, that kind of thing, maybe mm -hmm. a little bit softer on the feminine mm -hmm. side. Sure. It'd be interesting to do a, a blind lineup of yes. female and male. I think it would be cool. <laughs> crafted wines. Yeah. Um, so what are some of your favorite food and wine pairings? What are some of your go-tos or particularly memorable sure. experiences that you could share? Mm, okay, well, I, I know it's gonna sound pretty cliche, but Chardonnay and popcorn with a bit of truffle salt is one of my absolute yeah. go-tos. <laughs> That's my idea of a date night. And um, if you didn't know this already, now you do, a whole bottle of Chardonnay will fit in a swell water bottle <laughs> and you can bring that to the movie theater and bring some of your own stemware and nobody will oh my god that's amazing <laughs> i'm definitely gonna yeah. do that <laughs> yeah so i'd say that would be one of my faves okay um and of course we're doing um a port style now um and it's actually quite lovely uh with blue cheese this is my mm. idea of dessert yeah so yeah yeah i'd say those are pairing. exactly it's it's not very you know in your face or but it's delicious yeah it's tried and true Absolutely. Um, what are some varietals that you would say you're excited about or um, Van Amite might be experimenting in the future with? Um, I'd love to say that we might work on, it's not necessarily a varietal, but I'd love to work on bubbles at some mm. point. Um, but you know what, we don't really have that much space to, to add on. Uh, we make under 2,000 cases. Oh wow. So um, quite <clears throat> a lot more than yeah. under. But, um, you know, it's the space that we have is the footprint of our little winery. It's mm -hmm. just all happening right below us. And um, I mean, I'd love to play with some Syrah if you really oh, want to Oh, yeah. I love it. I yeah. just love the grape. It does. Southern Okanagan Syrah yeah. is just cool, hauntingly beautiful. Cool climate, totally. Yeah. yeah. And Cap Franc is always fun. Too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting in my travels, um, all the winemakers that I've been talking to um, were really honing in on mm -hmm. what we're good at and I'm, I'm hearing a lot of the same things, you know, Gamay, Pinot, Riesling, totally. Cabernet Franc yes. specifically, which yes. is fabulous to see because it's like, okay, now it's this is when the uh, examples and expressions are really going to explode oh, sure. in terms of quality. When people so, are, and the winemakers are as excited about yeah. it, yeah, yeah, passionate. It's sure. an exciting time. Awesome. Well, uh, again, this is Laura with Silken Coop, and thank you so much, Catherine, for having me here. Come and visit Vinamite in Oliver. Cheers. Their wines are excellent. Thank Cheers. You.